Hey everybody, it's Mr. Smeeds, and today we'll be covering two different reproductive strategies that species use to pass on their genes. Case-selected species use what I like to call quality over quantity. So they have just a few offspring at a time, but they take really good care of them. And they're able to do this because they live a long time and they can afford to spend their energy and their time on parenting. So we have elephants here as a great example. On the other hand, our selected species take the quantity approach to the question of how to pass on their genes. They have many, many offspring in the hopes that at least some of them survive, and they generally live much shorter lives and often only reproduce once, so they can't really afford to produce a few offspring and take care of them. Uh, they like to really crank out the offspring, as I like to say, and just hope that some of them survive. Uh, spiders here are a great example. They're going to have hundreds and hundreds of offspring. They're going to leave them to fend for themselves, and again, they're just going to hope that some of them happen to survive. Our objective today is to be able to identify the differences between K-selected and R-selected species. And we have a lot of essential knowledge today. Uh, the first two are basically everything you need to know about R-selected and K-selected species. Then we have a new term here to know that's biotic potential, which is the maximum reproduction rate of a population. This is going to be much higher for R-selected than it is for K-selected species. Uh, then we have to know that not all species are perfectly R-selected or perfectly K-selected. So with most classification systems in science, there's a spectrum. So we'll talk about how it's not just binary, it's not just one or the other. And then finally, we'll talk about why our selected species are more likely to become invasives and why case selected species are more likely to be negative, negatively impacted by invasive species. And then the science skill that we'll be practicing at the end of the lesson today is to be describing the patterns or trends in data. So as I mentioned in the intro, uh, we have the reproductive strategies here, R and K-selected, and they sort of represent the quantity versus quality approach. And so before we talk about the characteristics, we need to review that these are both reproductive strategies or approaches that different species take to passing on their genes. So all species pass on their genes to offspring. It's basically the driving force behind all of life. And these are just two different approaches to accomplish that goal. So they both work and they're both suited to the organisms that use them. And again, we wanna think of them as strategies and focusing on either quality or quantity. So case selected species here take the quality approach. They're typically larger, longer lived animals like large mammals, and they only have a few offspring at a time, but they take really good care of them. So because they live longer, they take longer to reach sexual maturity, but they also usually have the opportunity to reproduce many times over their lifespan. Now, since they only have a few organisms or a few offspring at a time, they invest a lot of energy in them. They get them food, they keep them warm, and they might even fight off predators. Because of this, though, they have a lower biotic potential or maximum reproductive rate, which means they're going to exhibit slower population growth because it takes a long time for them to give birth and raise their offspring, their populations just can't grow as fast. Now, this can be a problem if there's an environmental disturbance like a disease or an invasive species because their populations just take so long to recover back to that initial size. Our selected species, on the other hand, are gonna take the quantity approach. So they're generally smaller, shorter lived organisms like insects, fish, and plants. And they often don't live enough to reproduce numerous times, so they really got to make that one shot count. Um, because they don't live long, they reach sexual maturity very quickly, and they produce many offspring at one time. They invest their energy in the production of this large number of offspring, but then they invest little to no energy in caring for them. So often there's no parental care at all. Since they don't care for them, they need to have a lot of offspring in order to ensure that at least some of them survive. So they have a very high biotic potential or maximum reproductive rate. However, this reproductive rate can also make them more likely to become invasive species because their populations grow so rapidly, they often outcompete slower case-selected species for re, uh, resources like food or water. So here's a quick guide of the basic traits for both case-selected and R-selected species. And again, think of case-selected species as kind of taking their time. Slow and steady wins the race. They live a long time, so it takes them a long time to reach sexual maturity. And this also means that they have to protect and care for their offspring for a while as those offspring grow and develop. Because their populations grow slowly though, they're usually relatively stable 
they exist near their carrying capacity or their maximum population size. Our selected species are basically the opposite. They uh, live short lifespans, they reach sexual maturity very quickly, and they reproduce many offspring. They also invest their energy more in the production of offspring rather than caring for them. So it takes a lot of energy for a mother spider or fish to produce thousands and thousands of eggs, and then they don't invest that energy in caring for them. So this leads to them having very fast population growth, but very variable population sizes since they're subject to kind of dramatic increases or decreases. So it's important to remember that not every organism is perfectly K-selected or R-selected. We can see here two extreme examples of a highly K-selected organism, the chimp, or a highly R-selected oyster. But you'll notice here there's many species that are somewhere in the middle, like the frog and the hare. So the frog and the hare are going to produce a fair number of offspring compared to the chimp, but they're also going to show some parental care compared to the oyster. So not every single organism fits perfectly into R selected or K selected. It is kind of a spectrum. So here we have the mother hare who is going to provide quite a bit of care to her offspring. They're going to be somewhere in the range of 10 to 12 at a time. And frogs, even though they may have hundreds of offspring in a reproductive cycle, many frogs offer some parental care, such as this poison dart frog here that's going to carry tadpoles on her back. So again, it's a spectrum. These organisms aren't going to exhibit the same kind of parental care that a chimpanzee mother does, having one baby chimp every five years, but they're also not going to just leave their numerous offspring to fend for themselves like the oyster. So now we're going to talk about invasiveness and disturbance. So like I've said earlier, both of these reproductive strategies work to pass on their genes, or we wouldn't see so many organisms in both groups. Um, but they do have some disadvantages. So the slow reproductive rate or biotic potential of K-selected species makes them slower to repopulate after environmental change or disturbance, such as a forest fire or a disease. And then unfortunately, there's kind of a double whammy effect on population recovery for the K-selected species. Since their young are born very vulnerable and usually unable to care for themselves, the death of a parent often means the death of their offspring as well. So that's more than just the one parent dying that's impacting the population. It's also probably killing the offspring. Their slow sexual maturity and their low biotic potential also makes them more vulnerable to being outcompeted for limiting resources by highly competitive, rapidly reproducing invasive species. So as you may guess, these invasives are usually our selected species because they repopulate so quickly when they move to a new ecosystem, they can oftentimes outcompete these slower reproducing K-selected species. Uh, their slow population recovery also leads to K-selected species being less likely to adapt to a changing environment. Uh, this is because they have longer generation times and smaller population sizes, so there's less genetic diversity, and as a result, their populations are less adaptable. They're less likely to have beneficial mutations that allow them to quickly evolve and adapt to new environmental conditions. So as a result of all these factors, K-selected species are far more likely to go extinct than our selected species. So today our skill that we'll practice is concept explanation, and we want to be able to identify one characteristic of an R-selected species that could increase the likelihood of the R-selected species becoming a more successful invasive species than a K-selected species. So our second practice skill that we're going to do here is data analysis. So we have a data table of zebra mussels and unionid mussels, and we want to be able to describe the relationship between zebra mussel and unionid mussel population density in the Hudson River. All right, everybody, thanks for watching today. Don't forget to like this video if it was helpful and subscribe for future apes video notes. And as always, think like a mountain, write like a scholar.